Hey guys, we got a uh, video for you tonight all about fishing with the gear that I'm going to be using really tomorrow to catch all sorts of fish. So I hope you can join us for the live chat. I'll be paying attention to uh, anybody joining us in the chat box here and uh, answering questions about our setup. So I have a couple fishing poles here and the idea behind this video is just to share with you what we're going to be using to catch pretty much almost any freshwater fish. Now when I say just about every freshwater fish we're talking about bass, trout, panfish, uh, you can catch some pike with this stuff, you can catch some uh, pickerel, some perch, crappie, uh, really all kinds of fish this applies to. and. Uh, this setup is, it's a very basic setup. It's something that I like to take with me uh, if I'm just running out real quick to a new body of water. You know, I can bring this in the back of my car. It's very small. So you're going to see it's very simple tackle, very basic stuff, uh, and not too expensive. And with this, you can catch all sorts of a variety of fish. So thanks for joining us for the live chat. And let's get into this topic of tackle. So the first off, what I want to talk about is just the fishing pole. And here we have a what you might call like a medium action, just a basic setup for medium action, kind of bass fishing setup. Uh, this reel that I have on here, I just picked this up today. I needed to update my reels. It had been a few years since I'd gotten some new reels. And the, the model of the reel isn't really what's important. I would say really with that, just focus on what's in your budget. Uh, but what you want to pay attention to reel wise is what size pound test your reel can handle. So a lot of a lot of times if you get something kind of in the middle, it can handle smaller fish, it can handle larger fish, and you'll find that you're able to do a lot with less. Uh, so this reel is designed for uh, somewhere between six, eight, ten pound test, kind of maxes out at ten. And when you go into a tackle shop or you go to shopping online, find a reel like this, somewhere in the 8 to 10 pound test range. And the reason why is you can put a little bit smaller, you can put like 6 pound test and fish for trout with this sort of reel. Uh, 8 pound test to 10 pound test, it can handle some of the larger fish. And uh, believe it or not, I've caught plenty of striped bass, which is a saltwater species, which we're not going to talk about tonight, uh, but larger fish on an 8 pound test reel with 8 or 10 pound test. So if you get yourself this size of a reel, it's a very good kind of middle of the road spot where you're able to catch a lot of fish, whether they're smaller or bigger. And then I like to put that on a medium action pole. Uh, this one here, if you look at it, it's just it's pretty much as tall as me. It's about a six foot pole. You can get something longer, but that's a little bit unwieldy if you're kind of running gunning on the banks. I have some longer fishing poles. I have some shorter stuff. And uh, if you're only going to do this simple basic setup, just one pole, running and gunning on the shores, or even going out in a boat, and then with the basic tackle to catch all sorts of freshwater fish, then medium action, um, more of a bass style fishing pole, medium action, with that 8 to 10 pound test reel. And on that, depending on if you're fishing for trout, maybe you put 6 pound test. If you're fishing for a bass or something bigger, maybe 8 or 10 pound, depending on what you're fishing. You can't go wrong with 6 or 8 for the smaller stuff. And I like to go a little bit smaller if, if I'm trying to decide between two. Usually, depending on the situation, I like to go a little bit smaller because I feel like the fish are going to be less likely to see it. So this is the pole that I catch. I take everywhere. If, I, if I'm just taking one pole with me, it's this medium action rod and uh, it's about six foot with that eight pound test spool on it, uh, reel on it, and I'm using eight pound mono. So I'm not gonna get too much into the, the details of the different lines tonight. Just get eight pound mono filament and you'll be good to go for this basic setup. Now, before I move on, I'm gonna, we're gonna check the chat box here and just say hi to everybody. Everybody watching, thanks for joining for the live show. Uh, nose back, Davida, Forever Fishing, nice, Forever Fishing's back. So guys, talking about some worms that you use, uh, love fishing, wish it was called catching. Ben says, amen, Ben, I hear that. So guys, if you have any questions or if you want to uh, add any tips, be sure to enter them in the chat box and we'll cover that. 
So this is the fishing pole. But now you need more than a fishing pole uh, to go and hit the water. And the setup I'm going to show you tackle-wise, it's very simple. It's just one little box here. So we're going to cut over to take a look at the tackle. And we're going to see what I am using tackle-wise. Uh, for our outings and this is the tackle I'll be taking this with me I'll be taking this with me tomorrow we'll be using all this tackle tomorrow is opening day in Connecticut and uh, I'll be making sure to have this kit with me this has all the stuff that I might need for pretty much any situation so you can see it's just a very small I call it the everything box of course when I wrote it I wrote it upside down uh, so this is my everything box uh, generally, you can you can buy these kind of plastic tackle divider boxes, you know, in big box stores. You can get them individual, or you can get them. I bought a tackle box that came with four of these, and I designed each one of these for a different use. So I have one of these plastic containers for larger baits. I have a plastic container for um, my saltwater stuff, and then this everything box. The reason I call this the everything box is because in this box I have everything I need to go freshwater fishing at a moment's notice and probably catch almost any of the species that I'd be target targeting. So let's crack into the everything box and see what's inside. Ben Atkins asked me, don't you like braided line? I love braided line, Ben. But uh, if I got to just pick one for a simple setup to talk about tonight, the simple setup, I'm going with mono. But braid is great for certain uses. So you can see in this box, I have a variety, a little bit of everything. Uh, make sure you can see it all in here. I'll just shimmy it up. This, tackle, this little tackle plastic box here is designed to have all the necessities for a quick day of fishing. So if I have an hour or two before or after work while I'm driving somewhere. You can fit this under the seat of your car, a grab and go kind of thing. And uh, we're gonna go through from the top, we're, uh, we'll go from the bottom up here. So in this area I have my, you know, just my basic tackle. I got some split shot. Split shot is just a real easy way to weigh your lines down. If you're casting a lightweight presentation like these little, little mini hooks here, a little bit of split shot added to the line just helps it get in the right spot. If you're in a jam and you want to do a drop shot presentation, you can put split shot at the bottom. Just a little, you know, little package of split shot. I get the miscellaneous. You get a couple different sizes. Can't go wrong having a little packet of split shot. Next up, I have just some very small, like size 8 bait holder hooks. And the bait holders, I'll hold one up real close here. Um, you'll notice they have a barb and then these two little barbs here. Those two little barbs on the shank are for holding your bait in place. I use these specifically for when I'm trout fishing and if I'm not doing, uh, if I'm not doing a catch and release, if I'm taking stuff home, I'll use these hooks. If I'm doing catch and release, I'll avoid this because it's a very small hook and it can get swallowed by the fish. But if I'm taking fish home to eat, uh, these really little hooks, I just put a worm on that hook, actually I put half a worm and then a little piece of split shot up above it and that does an incredible job at being undetectable for the trout. They'll come up and grab it, turn and I can set the hook and uh, that's just a great, great little hook for just filling the freezer with trout. Can't go wrong with a couple inline spinners. Here we have, I just have a silver and a gold, these are blue fox. But uh, any of them will do. Rooster tails are great. Just a couple of those. They really work for anything. You throw one of those at a trout, it's going to bite it. At a bass, you can get some perch on those if it's a bigger perch. These are a bit bigger, more for bass and larger trout. But you can get smaller versions. Um, and same same with the, the hook. I didn't mention this, but the hook with the worm, you can catch all kinds of fish with that. You can catch bass. You can catch perch. You can catch... Just all sorts of things, crappy and, and sunnies for sure, and the, the trout is what I target with. But same with this, all kinds of different. You might wind up catching a pike or a pickerel with this. A lot of the predatory fish will come and hit those. So those are just a great addition to have. Now when it comes to the larger hooks, I, I keep two on me at all times. These are 
an offset, big offset hook. And the reason I use these hooks, you'll see a little bit later when we talk about the rubber worms, uh, but these hooks are really good for bass fishing. Bass have a really big mouth and that big wide gap makes it easy to hook that bass as he comes to chomp on the bait. And it's harder for a bass, believe it or not, it's actually harder for a bass to get off of one of these hooks than a treble hook because there's not as much space for him to get caught on that treble. So these are really a great option for just locking onto that bass. And I'll show you now, we'll talk about the rubber worm in a minute, but the way that I'll generally rig this is either, this is called wacky rigging, so the bass comes and hits it like that, or you can rig it weedless. I'll show you that a little later, but the, it's hidden like this and it swims through the water like that. And again, there's a nice big area to hook that bass. So those are really good. That's a size, uh, I use three to fives. And then the last good big size hook that I'll keep on me at all times, I use a jig head. Uh, jig heads are really great if you're using something like a curly tail power bait, which we'll talk about in a second, or I have some tubes here. So if you want your worm or your tube or whatever your soft plastic is to get to the bottom and kind of bounce off the bottom, those two jig heads do a really nice job at uh, keeping those tubes down. And you can get various sizes, but if we're keeping it simple here, I just have that one size. To be honest, I don't even <laughs> know what size that is. This is my, like I said, it's just my simple grab and go kit. Now, still kind of in the world of tackle and gear, uh, I do like to keep a spare little micro tool in here. This one has all kinds of stuff. It's got a little mini plier. It's got a little mini knife. It's got a little mini screwdriver. When I go out in my rowboat, sometimes I gotta tighten or loosen the oars. This thing clips onto you. It's got a little screwdriver that screws out there, uh, Phillips head. So I keep that, I always have my EDC, my everyday carry on me at all times, but that's just a backup in case I were to lose something. That's called the little, little guppy, and I like to keep it in my box. So that covers all the gear and the tackle. Now we'll get into some of these lures and baits. Before we do, I'm just going to check the comments here and say hello to whoever's joined us. How you doing there, Weekend Homestead? We got L, L I Lil T Radio. I got to get back to you guys. Thanks for emailing me. Um... Do we use fish as a feed substitute? We have done that in the past. Not on purpose, just if we catch a bunch of fish, that's a good use for them. So good question, guys. All right, so now I uh, let's get into our lures. Here I have a little swim bait, a little hard swim bait. Um, this one is, a, I think it dives to seven feet, just a black and silver kind of pattern. Looks like a you know fish. You tie that on and you can work the bottom. It'll dive for you. It's got the bill there. Uh, you know any brand you want to pick for that. I just keep a small one on me, right there. That's good for covering water fast. So you'll catch trout, you'll catch bass, pike. You know all those fresh water. You won't catch any panfish with that probably, but you can cover a lot of ground quickly because you can move this you know at a steady retrieve. It covers a lot of water. So when I first arrive to a new spot or I'm out for the morning, I like to use either a crankbait or a um, diving bait or we'll show this in a second. But these are just good for covering ground quickly. Sometimes I find, I don't find these work as well for me in the bodies of water I fish. I like a slower, more natural approach. But this is a good way to really quickly just get an idea if the fish are hungry and if they're being willing to bite or not. So... All right, uh, this, uh, let's go over here. This is a big spinner bait, and you'll see this spinner bait has a stinger hook on it, so it's got that second little hook on the back. This does a real good job of catching fish that are a little slow. Spinner bait, also another fast searching presentation. So you move that through the water quickly to see if you can find the fish. And uh, first thing in the morning, I'll always throw one of these if I have a bigger rod and reel on me. I got two colors. They're darker because I use them. I'll use them early in the morning so it's dark out. So you want a dark color for more contrast or more. It'll it'll show up better in the darkness. Believe it or not, dark baits actually show up better in the early morning. And then I have my soft plastic bait. So I have a curly tail power bait. Power bait they infuse with flavor that the fish like. That curly tail action. 
uh, and that chartreuse color is really attractive too. Uh, I find this works in more murkier waters and easier fish. This is not a very um, natural presentation. It's kind of a loud presentation. I'll rig that on one of my jig heads and it'll swim through the water and that tail will curl and it gets their attention. This, if the day, when, when nothing else is working, this always works. This is a Gary Yamamoto Senko and uh, LILT Radio, guys. Thank you for the super chat, guys. That is huge. Guys, LILT Radio just gave us a $2 super chat. And uh, that's how we get to do these live shows, man. Your guys' support is huge. So thank you guys so much. And uh, all right, so back to our baits here. So this is a, a natural presentation. This is the Senko. Uh, the easiest way to, I showed before, wacky presentation. You just put it down in the center like that. And you let that slowly fall in the water. And the fish see that gentle pulsing and that natural color. And man, they just hammer that. This, this works when nothing else works. This works all day long. I've caught more giant bass on that. I've caught trout on that presentation. Believe it or not, I've caught pike on that presentation. And you can check out our video on this channel if, to prove it. You can see the pike video and us catching them on that. A good old Senko Forever Fishing says, amen. So that is a baby bass color. The baby bass color seems to do really well. And uh, LALT wants to go fishing right now. Amen, guys. Tomorrow's opening day for us. My kids are all excited to go. And we put this together today. Lastly, I keep these. These are coffee tubes. They are coffee and salt impregnated. So uh, if you open this up and you smell it, it actually does smell like coffee. And you can see the salt on the tube. I throw one of those tubes. The jig head. I throw it on the jig head. Have that swim through the water column like that, bouncing off the bottom. These work really good during the bass spawn because it looks like a fish coming around to eat the baby, the eggs. And uh, the fish hate that. So bounce that off the bottom a couple times. And I keep that in its bag because it is coffee scented. And uh, I want to keep that scent in there. I sometimes do that with the power bait too, but the power bait, this one... Is an older one. I didn't have the bag anymore. So with this setup, guys, you can catch almost anything. You can catch bass. You can catch trout. You can catch crappy and panfish, perch, uh, pike, pickerel, all those freshwater species that we love to go out and catch. They are here. They are represented in this kit. And this is not too expensive. If you put this little everything box together and that fishing pole you know, you could, depending on the combo of a fishing pole that you buy, you could get away for, you know, around 100 bucks. You could have all this tackle and gear. And this will work for so much. It really, uh, really just is amazing how many different animals this will work for. So, guys, let me come over here to the computer here and uh, just say hi to everybody who's watching. I'm going to pull ourselves in focus here. Thanks for joining, and I uh, just want to say hello to everyone. Nice little shout-out. Again, thank you, LILT Radio, for your uh, for your super chat. That It blows me away, the support that we've been getting here on Homesteady. And I got your guys' email, and I will get back to you. Just been busy getting ready for opening day here. Uh, so thanks for watching. In line, uh, line Flyer 1, half block from the lake. Oh, man, that's got to be rough. How do you ever get anything done? Forever Fishing, thanks for watching, man. And uh, let's see, Christopher Soulsby, glad you could catch Christopher, one of the live shows. Jack, Jack Sparrow is not driving the boat tomorrow, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to be rowing the boat. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Ben says, I don't do freshwater here in Florida as I hate gators. Saltwater in a kayak is the way we do it here. I tried saltwater in a kayak one time, Ben, and uh, I didn't catch anything. But I was with you. I was too afraid to go freshwater in the kayak with all those gators swimming around. So uh, maybe next time I'm in Florida, you'll be getting a phone call. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. We're going to close down. I got an early morning tomorrow with the kids. And uh, we're going to go out and do some fishing all over the place. And hopefully we'll catch some of that on video and be able to share that with you later. So we're going to sign off. Thanks for joining. And we will talk to you soon.